Hello guys, welcome back to the Paper Whisper. Oh. Today, I'll be teaching you how to make the herringbone tessellation, which is a model. I don't know who it's designed by, but it's pretty cool. I don't have one to show you right now, but you'll see. Oh, there it is. This is what it looks like. It's pretty cool. This is actually one I did from an, a previous attempt at, for a tutorial. And so, unfortunately, um, I cursed in the video, so I can't put it on my channel. So, this is a new one, except I'm going to show it a bit better. We're going to, um, we're going to, we're going to zoom in. And let me turn this a bit. Good enough. Sorry. What you're going to do is you're going to start white set. Uh, if you have a square, you're going to start white side up. Or it doesn't really matter. Whatever side you prefer. If you, it, well, it doesn't It doesn't matter because when you have it, it's just double colored. So one on one side, one on the other. So it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to start with a double co double sided colored sheet of printer paper. Cardstock. Not really cardstock. More like uh, it's a, it's a kind of thick. But... So not ideal, but it works. So what you're gonna do is for this, I'm gonna fold it into a square. So let me do that. I'm gonna start by folding the top edge. Let me zoom out a bit. Let me zoom in, it's the best idea. Um, and fold it to um to this edge. So making a triangle. And make sure it goes to this one, that top corner. And since we're gonna use this crease, we're gonna make a full crease. Then, you're gonna make sure it's extra strong. Then turn over, and make a crease. Let me turn this off, actually. From this point, all the way across. There we go. And this time, you're gonna make, it an ex make it a straight line. And make sure it aligns, the crease lines with this edge. Now you wanna make it, this is the most important crease in this whole model because we need a perfect square. So this is all, it's also important to get this really strongly greased because then it'll be easier to, um, well, it'll be easier to rip it off. And turn over and unfold everything. Then go along the crease the other way, making it genderless. We're gonna actually do a lot of that today. Then, we're gonna make a tiny rip. And then, this works really well with this paper, actually. You're gonna put your hands on each side, make the crease, and slowly tear it into two parts. Pulling it apart, Jeremy Schaefer style. Anyways, turn over. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it doesn't really matter if you turn over. You're gonna fold edge to edge fully. There's no pinching in here, thankfully. This is a simple model, but it takes a bit of practice. Okay, and to unfold, then fold each of the two edges to the center crease, the middle crease. Now, what you're gonna do is you are gonna unfold. Now, just so you know, this one is divided into eight, an eight by eight grid. What we're gonna make is a 16 by 16 grid. No, scratch that, I'm gonna make it eight by eight grid, it's easier. So now, you're gonna fold this edge, so this edge, to the first grease. Now, pull that same edge to the last crease. So now, sorry. Okay, now 
you're gonna unfold and it'll be on the other side, except it's the way no, it unfolds to the second is not the last crease, since we made the first crease. Now it's the second to the last crease. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna fold to the second to the last crease. Or the last of the fourths. Okay, now unfold. You're gonna have eights. Turn over so that's all now in folds and go over them. Strongly. Like I said, making them genderless. Just like we did with the ripping part. So we're not gonna rip it, don't worry. That won't really do origami. Take all seven creases over again. Okay, unfold. It's gonna look a lot like an S. Now, keep going. Now, the easiest thing to do is to stay on this side, rotate 90 degrees, and fold into eighths again. Now, this is important not to use the accordion method and not make pleat or crimp folds. What you want to do is make sure they're all on the same side, all the valley folds, and then all the mountain folds. Really important. That way, it's easiest to go over them. You only, and it's the easiest way, and you only have to turn it over once. Okay, now, turn for the nine degrees and finish the eighths. I know, my hair is pretty colored, but, um, it's just what I have. If you, if I hold it up a bit, you'll see the real color. It's not, it's not yellow, it's orange. It's with the right lighting, you'll see it. It's a really bright orange. Now turn over and go over them, like usual. Don't want that to happen. Want to go over the creases, right? And we are done with the eighths on this or in these two directions. In, in the square eighths. Now we're gonna rotate 45 degrees. Let me change my camera a bit. So that we have a diamond or or, or a square rotated 45 degrees. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold the corner to the first intersection. Now, go to the next intersection, and the next. And the next, etc. Et <sighs> Sorry, I got something stuck in my head. Yeah, I think you might be wondering, why is it called the... Hearing wind tessellation if it looks like this. I have no clue why. I'm with you. If you um um if you do know why it's called that, um I don't know how you're gonna tell me because I'm not getting my email away, but um and I am not allowed in comments, but good for you. I I'm yet I'm yet, yet to learn. Okay. Rotate ninety degrees and repeat. But you're all, once you hit the smaller the creases you just did, you're only going to go to every two intersections. I'll explain that when we get there. Let me use my, one sec, let me grab my paper, wait. One sec. 
There we go. Okay, so put it up. You can go off of it. Okay, now that we're here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go every two. So one, two, or to the next intersection in front of it. I should probably should explain that better. Of course, you don't need to make the diagonal crease he has already made. You can't fool me this time, computer. You're not gonna get me this time. Now unfold and turn over. <clears throat> and as you know, you know the drill. I'm gonna make these over so they're genderless. No, I think I'm gonna stop explaining for now. You know what? Actually, I think I'm gonna keep explaining because it makes the most sense. Because then you'll even if you that way you don't need to rewind. Okay, so you go over that the exact crease that you already made, but only on this direction, because then it'd be completely pointless, because you already went over it. Okay, now unfold, and you're gonna rotate. 90 degrees again and we're gonna do that all over again so go to the to every intersection in front of it and so on and so on and so on one intersection two intersections three intersections four intersections five intersections six intersections I guess I don't really keep counting. What am I doing? Myself counting again. If you know me in real life, you probably know that I love math. I completely love it. My favorite type is probably trigonometry. I really enjoy it. Okay, now turn 90 degrees. And we're going to use my paper, my trusty paper weight. And go to the next, this intersection, and the next one, and so on, and so on, and so forth. You know what? Wait, wait, if it's really working. Not a big deal. It doesn't seem like that. I'm coming up to it soon. I'm getting you, corner. I'm getting you. <laughs> I'm coming. Sorry about the noise in the beginning of the video. I have a bit of an upset stomach. No, I'm not farting. That's gross. Just it was a weird stomach noise. Sorry. Through the last few creases. And then we have a bit of a fun step. Now, if you've done a flasher before, you'll be pretty familiar with this, I hope. What you're gonna do, you're gonna start on. I don't I think it's, it doesn't really matter what side you start on, but basically, you're gonna fold an accordion this time. Like I said, it doesn't matter what side you start on. It's going to look the same on both sides. It's pretty cool. Okay. Now, you're going to fold this corner along this crease. Then you're going to make some reverse folds in the middle. It makes a final corner. Okay, we have that. Now, what we're gonna do is we are gonna go along this, the zigzag that's parallel to this zigzag. 
So we're gonna make it mountain folds. Like that. And where we and, and we're gonna keep doing that. But each time we do the mountain folds, we're gonna need to turn over, unfortunately. But that's not a big deal. So it's not gonna flatten very easily. That's because we need to make the new mountain folds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do these. By the way, this is quite tricky for a beginner. I'd recommend having at least three years of experience to do this, at least. Okay, then. Okay, and we're gonna close it up. Oops, don't forget your, where the creases are. It'll be fine. Okay. Just check the creases a bit. Very important to make sure the creases are good. So we have this once you we do the accordion. We're gonna have this. Now this time we're gonna turn over so that the first one is the one closest to us is a valley fold, and we are gonna repeat. And this time it's gonna be a bit easier to collapse it. Let me show you. So you're gonna go. You're gonna just push here. That's really all you have to do. If you push the right points, it's kind of like martial arts. Here we're going to get it perfectly. If you push the wrong points, it could totally mess you up and you could lose the fight. Don't quote me on that. I don't know martial arts. Okay, so we do the small fold in the end and then you freeze. Now, each, I meant to say this earlier, I forgot, but each time you you finish a row, you're gonna crease really strongly. Really strongly. Okay, so we're gonna turn back over so that it should be sticking up and not hanging down. As you see, starting to form. Now we're gonna repeat. As I think I think you know the drill by now. So I'm gonna go a bit quicker and not explain it as much. Feel free to rewind to if you didn't get it. Now I I'm gonna be honest, I was really frustrated with this at first. I could not get it and when my went and when my, I actually figured this out, not not be not because they taught me, but I learned about this origami from my um from my fifth grade teacher. One of them at least. I love fifth grade teachers. But the point is, this fifth grade teacher was really smart, and she did origami, and she said she really enjoyed. She 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 tried to teach me it; it didn't go very well, and so I went up, and she had to guide my hands. But when I found this amazing YouTube video, I can't remember who it was by. He um really explained it well, and then something one day in the summer when I was about to go to the beach just clicked, and I gave and I made a, a pretty cool one, and I also made one that I gave to the hotels owner which she was really impressed anywho but that's just an example of origami can bring you many good things in life i'm not don't worry the video is not done but um the um the thing is if you do origami correctly and it doesn't get frustrating then what you can do is you can give it to people and by that i mean you can take you can take an origami and give it as a gift like a birthday present or something and, and when you do that, it will make people very, very happy. So spread the love. Make sure that um, make sure that people um, are make sure that people are having a good time. And if they're sad, give them some origami. They'll enjoy it. Origami is a huge um, bucket filler for some people. 
to just see the folded paper and how it becomes art. It's pretty cool. If you're wondering what the bucket is, it's a, it's like, it, it basically is, is a growth mindset tip. It's, if you already know, you, you know, but, um, it's basically, uh, um, a bucket that, Imagine an imagine a hypothetical bucket that floats over your head, and the more water you have, the more calm and happy you are. But if you have the less water you have, the more unstable and sad and mad you are. And so, it when you when if it empties your bucket, it means you less it takes water away. But it but if it fills your bucket, which is really good, then it then it won't take water away. It will actually add water, as the word fill is. Okay, so like I said, it can really make someone's day if you give them origami, especially this one. This one's absolutely beautiful. Of course, I did not design it, but I have no clue who designed it. So I just I'm not gonna I'm just not gonna say it. But yeah, so basically we're almost done. As you see, it's getting easier by the end. Don't forget to push. On, don't forget to reverse these and make sure it goes all the way. The cool thing about this is it's also a bungee. Oh, by the way, stay tuned in my channel because soon I'll be um, I'll make a, a origami phoenix with this as its tail. So I hope you will like that. Nope, that wasn't a rip. Hopefully not. Okay, the last one. I'm gonna explain that a bit. So we have it almost done, as you see. Now, if you want, you can leave it like that if you like it. But I am going to make sure it's completely, well, not flat, but completely a square or a rectangle or whatever it is. So what you're going to do, sorry, I'm really itchy. I mean, it was, I'm, no, I'm not picking it. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to make all reverse folds. So you're going to, you see that there is three, no, four um, ga gaps. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go along. Wait, let me make sure my sure computer doesn't turn off. You're gonna make sure you go along this, these two folds. Do that all four times. And we are done. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And I will, and make sure to um, share this video to others so they can spread origami love, and I will see you next time. Bye!